we're going to be talking about target marketing and uh, the way we will target the market. Uh, this is going to be a key talk in many of other things we're going to talk about later on, uh, especially in internet marketing. So um, I try to go through it slowly. Uh, for those they know most of these things, they're going to bear with me. For the others, probably they have to do more study, more reading. There are extra notes there to uh, read and look at it. Now, as the word says, the target marketing is, you know, we're going to market, which is made of lots of people. We're not going to sell it to all of them. We want to identify who is the right customer for our products and services. That would allow us to focus our marketing effort, our resources, to get a better result out of the marketing exercise. Now, the way we're going to go about it is very simple, what we call market segmentation. This is taking a broad market and dividing it into a much more specific group of people, which have got a common characteristic which would suit our product. Now, these characteristics, is we are looking for something which will suit our product characteristics. If I've, we've got a luxury car, so we're looking at people who can afford luxury cars, who want to drive these cars. So it's a matching of the product uh, with the right clientele. Now, depending on these specific product characteristics and our rest of our marketing mix, we will uh, look at the market, look at the people within the market, the wider market. We may identify age groups which are more important, or their lifestyle, or where they live, or how they live, uh, are they married, do they have children. You know, there are so many factors which we can use, but not all of them are necessarily relevant. So anyway, we're going to look at the groupings and how the market segmentation would be done. Once you do the segmentation and you will identify the right characteristic of your typical clientele, then you can focus your marketing campaign and your promotion and your pricing strategy and your distributions and everything would come from that. It's a very strategic point which you have to identify here. Now, going into the general characteristics we're going to be look at, if we look at the market from geographical point of view, uh, does it make a difference for our product if somebody lives in the countryside or is in a very urban area? Is it cold climate or is it a very hot climate? I mean, if you're selling ice cream, you prefer to have a hot, hot climate. If you are selling uh, four-wheel drive cars, probably people who live in countryside are going to use it. So the, the geographic uh, segmentation would have an effect. You would, uh, we will go through different elements of it. Demographic segmentation, this is about people, their age, their uh, education, uh, their family size. The, uh, and the, the demographic one is the most important part of it. Most of market segmentation would be based on the demographic issues. Then you've got psychographic segmentation, behavioral segmentation, occasional you know, things which people are using at certain occasions, and the benefits can help us in segmentation. We're going to go through these in a more detail in a minute. Now, let's start with the geographical one. Geographical one like nations, states, regions, countries, cities, neighborhoods, uh, which also would have, within it would be the climates and the type of lifestyle they have there. When, just, just in, if you come across something called geoclusters. Geoclusters is when you put a geographical issue uh, segmentation and a demographical one together, which makes sense in some, some circumstances. Just if you hear about it, is that. Now, the demographic segmentation is the most popular way of looking at the market and dividing it, which would be gender, you know, age. Uh, but you have to think about it. Does it make a difference? It, sometimes it doesn't make any difference if it's a female or a male consumer for a product. Sometimes it does make a difference. Uh, the age group, usually it does matter. If you are a toy manufacturer, you're looking at a certain age group to sell it. Uh, if you are uh, uh, selling life insurance or you're selling, you know, a lot of these things have, has got a relation with age. 
the family, do, are they married? They're not married, single, married with one child, married with two child. You're selling a saloon car, so for families. You don't expect somebody who is young and single to drive a big saloon car. So the income level, the occupation, what kind of job they are doing, the education may have effect, the religion, race, nationality, all these are within the demographic. Some of these factors are important to your products, some of them are not. So is we will look at how we profile it later on. Now, the demographic is the widest part of sort of the market segmentation elements. Psychographic segmentation, it, it is the, using a psychology and demographics together. Uh, like a lifestyle, people's, if you look at the geographical, for example, segment, and you, you say people living in the cities, in the urban areas, their lifestyle would be different even if everything else is the same, their income is the same, their education is the same, religion, nationalities, whatever. But the same person, put, it, put the person in the countryside, in a rural area, would have a different lifestyle, would probably drive a different car, uh, would go to work probably with car, but in the city you can't drive your car, you can't find a parking. So these elements like personalities, their value system, their social class, so they become psychographics. Now, there are other things like behavioral segmentation. These are people's attitudes towards the product, the way you, people use the product. Not everybody uses the same product in the same way. So if that matters, you've got to look at it. Some way you can sometimes do it on occasion. Some products are sold in a certain occasions, like whatever they sell. Uh, red roses uh, sales goes up in Valentine time. Day. That's what people buy. So if you want to push to sell certain cards for Valentine, well, there's no point to do it uh, in the middle of summer because Valentine days is in February. And nobody's going to buy a card in um, July. So, or younger people would probably buy Valentine card for the loved ones than the older people. So the occasion itself can help you to do the segmentations. The product benefit itself, or the benefit people sought from the, the one from a product, that can also allow you to segment the market. Uh, if you think about a car, it has got a function, it takes you from A to B. But a young person, desire different, have got a desire, different desire from that car than an older person, than a married person, than a single person. So the benefits people want from the product, although it's the same product, can be different if they are, when they are in different uh, demographic grouping. Now, the key is to get the segmentation down, get a list of it, and see what effect has it got on your product, what age group, your consumers are, what gender they are, where do they live typically, uh, or, uh, does it matter or not, like you know, if you've got a fizzy drink, famous fizzy drink, people drink it anytime, anywhere, or you want to do that. You say it doesn't matter, it's cold, drink it, it's hot, drink it, whatever the climate situation. So you have to come up with that segmentation. Now when, once you have defined the segmentation, you're almost there, we call it you got your target audience profile done. That's a typical consumer of your product, which you have identified. They have got this, this age group. They live in different, this sort of situation. They have got this sort of job or income. They have got this, this sort of background, being education or race or religion or whatever. So you have, uh, it's like you have got a, the, the definition of a profile of a person. Now, you want it to be as uh, wide as possible in a way that the bigger group you can have in your audience, because these are the people you want to sell them, but you don't want too wide because then these characteristics are not common. More characteristics you put into it, obviously the smaller the group would come, which you've got to reach. The uh, wider you make the characteristic, then the whole world become your market. Then you wouldn't have the budget, obviously, to reach them all. So it's a balance to find out that the result of your market segmentation would be your 
target audience profile. The target audience profile would tell you where is your target market. So you can then start focusing your marketing effort towards that group of people. Once you have clearly defined this audience uh, and where they are and where the market is, then, then you can answer many of these questions like when you ask who is your typical client, you know who they are. This is the part, part uh, the, the, the characteristic that's where they live. Uh, you would then know where would they buy it from if they are living in a urban areas, so they, they go to shopping mall or they go to local store, whatever it is, you have identified that. Uh, what ta which group brings more business? What more ref which one gives you more referrals? So these would become identified from these. The other thing you can do, you can look at the competition. By looking at the competition, what they're doing, you can actually see who is their target audience. It's a lot easier because you can look at their advertising, their distribution, their availability of products in different stores, their pricing. So you can actually learn a lot more than you think from your competition because looking at what they're doing, it will actually tell you. It doesn't mean you go and, go and follow them, but if you're a smaller player, you may identify a market they are missing or they are just too big to go for it. And you can identify these niche markets to go for. So looking at your competitors is very important. It will teach you, uh, you will learn a lot about the market without doing a massive market research. And also you may identify certain niche markets. Knowing your product, characteristics of your product, you know, the values it has got, the unique values it's got. Now you're going to bring us, we got our typical audience, we got a profile of our audience, we know our product, we know hopefully the benefits of it, the, which you can play against the competition. A pricing has been done, or you have, have an idea something about pricing. Now you're going to position your product. Now positioning your product in the market is not really f a fixed position, it's a, it's a virtual sort of thing, it's a perceptual thing. It is how the consumer would think about your product. In their mind, where do they position it? Do they say this is high value added product? This is a value for money product? Or is it a, the brand is, uh, give them something special? There is a perceptual sort of thing which the client has got about product. All of you, uh, from when you go shopping and you buy a piece of clothing, for example, you may go for brand name because that brand name, in your mind, has got certain perceived values. The car you buy always is there. This, this is uh, in the, but it is in the mind of the consumer. But as a marketeers, our job is to create that perception for our product in the mind of the consumer. If you want to say my product is a expensive. But the quality product is not just easy to go and say, my product is good and it's expensive. They won't believe you. You have to work it on their psyche. And that's why you need to know your audience and see what works with them and give it to them. At the end of the day, your product has to justify that positioning. You cannot put rubbish out and tell people it's good. Unless you're a brilliant marketeer, that's not going to be possible. But you can have a very good product, but people don't believe it's good. Now, that's the job of the marketers to position it there. Now, coming to the end now, uh, successful positioning, if you want to do, there is a framework, there's six question, frame, uh, six step framework. You're going to ask this question, what position do your current position is, your product position is, if there is an existing product? Where do you want to take the product? From this position, do you want to move it? Do you want to sort of emphasize the position? What is your policy? Where do you want to go from there? If you have to defeat somebody out of the market, usually when like, you know, Pepsi, Cola and Coca-Cola or Pepsi and Coke, they're competing against each other in the same position in the market. So that's much more a clear fight to go for it. 
do you have a no, you, you come with this position, you have got everything sorted out, but you have the resources to do it. You know, obviously it costs money to advertise, to promote, to improve the packaging, the product itself, all of these cost money. What is your resources? Don't come up with a plan which you cannot afford it. The other thing, how much time you have got before you go bust or you, are, you, know, you lose your job. There's a time frame to achieve this. It's not a quick. You're going to work on the consumer, on their psyche, to develop this uh, situation, the position you want to hold. How much is the time you have got there? At the end of the day, then the question is, is your plan right, the right plan? Would it get us from here to there? Well, that's... Uh, while well, you have to go through it again and again, you do a test marketing on it, you get the uh, typical audience in front of your product or your advert or whatever you're doing to see what they feel. Is the reaction of the audience the same as what you think it is? More of that you do, you would be more confident that you're gonna get there. Now I'm gonna give you a simple exercise to do. Just choose a product. You choose a famous product, so it's easier to, to go through it. You can do it again and again for different products. Choose a product. Now, look at the product and identify what are the key segmentation factors for it. Is the age matter? If it does, what do you think the age group for the product is? Gender, does it matter? Female or sex? You know, male or female? Does it matter? Or is it a unisex sort of product? Go through all the segmentation factors, being geographical, demographical, whatever, and create a profile uh, of that target audience. It's just a matter of sitting down and thinking and be a bit clever about it. It takes not more than 20 minutes if you choose a, a, a typical product. And once you identify that, try to find out what's the position the product holds in your mind. Ask a few other people. Do you see, do they share the same position? Because it's a perceived value, it's not the f physical position. And if you see yes, everybody thinks in the same way, so the company is doing very well. They are positioned, and hopefully that's the position they want to have. And if you do that exercise a few times, you will start learning, okay, what are the factors, how the factors affect this positioning, and what's the position. Now, in everything else we're gonna do in internet marketing, the segmentation and profiling is a key factor because otherwise the next step cannot be happened. Once you don't know what's a target, you cannot shoot at it. All right, I think you had enough of me. See you later. <laughs>